Unabsolved by William Wilfred Campbell Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Unabsolved A Dramatic Monologue This poem is founded on the confession of a man who went with one of the expeditions to save Sir John Franklin's party, and who, being sent ahead, saw signs of them, but through cowardice was afraid to tell. O oh, father, hear my tale, then pity me, for even God his pity hath withdrawn. O oh, death was dread and awful in those days. You prayed of hell and punishment to come, and endless torments made for those who sin. Stern priest, put down your cross and hearken me. I see forever a white glinting plain, from night to night across the twinkling dark, a world of cold and fear and dread and death, and poor lost ones who starve and pinch and die. I could have saved them, I, yea, even I. You talk of hell. Is hell to see poor frames, wan, leathery cheeks, and dull, despairing eyes, from whence a low-flamed madness ebbing out goes slowly deathward through the eerie hours? To hear forever pitiless icy winds feel in the shivering canvas of the tent with idle brute curiosity nature hath while out around one universe of death stretches the loveless hearthless arctic night this is my doom it sitteth by my side and never leaves me through the desolate years go take your hell to men who never lived save as the slow world wendeth sluggish dull even they must suffer also poor bleak ones then is your feeble comfort nothing worth you tell me to have hope god will forgive o priest can god forgive a sin like mine you say he is all loving did he lie with me that night amid the eyeless dark and writhe with me and whisper save thyself that way to north lies cold and age and death an awful failure on men's odd tongues to linger years hereafter southward lies home heat and love and sweet blood pulsing life life with its morns and eves and glad tomorrows and joy and hope for many days to be did he i say lie with me there that night and know that awful tragedy beyond and my poor tragedy enacted there then must he feel him since as i have felt and live that hideous misery in his heart and knowing this i say unto thee priest he could not be a god and say forgive you plead my soul's salvation the one end and aim of all my thought then hearken priest for this my sin hath made me more than wise that seems to me the one great sin i sinned in selling all to save mine evil self stay hearken priest and haunt me not with hopes as futile as those icy fingered winds that stirred the canvas there that arctic night i bid thee hark and mumble not thy prayers like august bees heard in a summer room that drone afar but keep them for the dead the dull eared dead who sleep and heed them not 
Then hearken, priest, and learn thee of my woe, for I have lain afar on northern nights, by star-filled waste, and conned it o'er and o'er, and thought on God and life and many things, in all the baffling mystery of the dark. And I have held that awful rendezvous of naked self with self alone and bare, and knew myself as men have never known have fought the duel flashing hilt to hilt and blade to blade of flesh and spirit there until i lay a weak and wounded thing like some poor mangled bird the sportsman leaves writhing and twisting there amid the dark you talk of ladders leading up to light of windows bursting on the perfect day of dawns grown ruddy on the blackest night. Yea, I have groped about the muffled walls and beat my spirit's prison all in vain, only to find them shrouded fold on fold. And still the cruel, icy stars look down, and my dread memory stayeth with me still. It was a strange, mad quest we went upon, to seek the living in the lifeless north. For days and days and long, lone, loveless nights, we set our faces toward the Arctic sky, and threaded waste of that lone wilderness beyond the lands of summer and glad spring, beyond the region's kind of flower and bird, past glint horizons of auroral gleams, a haunted world of winter's wizened sleep, where death, a giant, aged and stark and wan, kept fast the entrance of those sunless caves where hides the day beyond the icy seas. Long day by day a desolation went, where our wan faces fared, or all that waste. And I was young and filled with love of life, and fear of ugly death as some weird black, the enemy of love and youth and joy, a lonely ruined bridge at edge of night, fading in blackness at the outer end. And those were cold, stern men I went with there, who held their lives as men to hold a gift not worth the keeping, men who told dread tales that made a madness in me of that waste and all its hellish, lonely solitude, and set my heart a-beating for the south, until that awful desolation ringed my reason round and shrunk my fearful heart. Yea, father, I had saved them but for this. Why did they send me on alone, ahead? Poor me, the only weak one of that band, who was too much of coward to show my fear? Why did life give me that mad fear of death, to make me selfish at the very last? Why did God give those men into my hand and leave them victim to a craven fear that walked those lonely waste in form of man. No, father, take your cross. Mine is a pain that only distant ages can outburn. Forgiveness? No. You know not what you say. You churchmen mumble words as charmers do and talk of God and love so glib and pat, and think you reach men's souls and give them light, when all the time my spirit is to you a land unfound, a region far removed, where walk dim ghosts of thoughts and fears and pains you never dreamed of. What know you of souls like this of mine? that hath girt misery some, and found the black with which God veils his face? 
You say the church absolves. You speak of peace. You talk of what not even God can do. But he, but what you make him. In my light. And mine is light of one who knows the case, the facts, the reasons, and hath weighed them too. There is but one absolver, the absolved. For I, since that far, fatal Arctic night, have been alone in some dread, shadowy court, where I was judge and guilty prisoner too. Words, words are empty. Were life built on words, how rich the poor would grow, the weak be strong, the hateful loving, and the scornful weak. The king would be a peasant, and the poor a king in his own right. The murderer, red from his foul guilt, would pass to God's own breast, and all damned things, long damned of earth's consent, in some dread law, much older far than we, would blossom righteous under heaven's face. Still fared we north across that frozen waste of icy horror ringed with awful night to seek the living in a world of death. And as we fared, a terror grew and grew about my heart like madness till I dreamed a vague desire to flee by night and creep, by steel-blue, windless plain and haunted wood, and wizened shore and headland once more south. There, as we went, the days grew wan and shrunk, and nights grew vast and weird and beautiful. Walled with flame glories of auroral light, ringing the frozen world with myriad spears of awful splendor, there across the night, and ever anon a shadowy, spectral pack of gleaming eyes and panting lurid tongues haunted the lone horizon toward the south. Then life ebbed lower in the bravest heart, and spake the leader, if in ten more days we chance on nothing, then will we return and set our faces once more to the south. For that dread land began to close us in with cold and hunger, bit at our poor limbs, till life grew there a feeble, flickering flame. Amid the snows and ice flows of that land, then ten days crept out, shrunk, and gray and wan, with nothing but the lonely haunted waste. Then spake the leader, if in five more days, then parceled out those five gray haggard days, while life to me grew like an ebbing tide that surged far out from some dread death-like strand, and horror came upon me like the night that seemed to gird the world in desolate walls. Then spake the leader, If in three more days. But when the third day waned, we came at last unto the shores of some dread lonely sea that gloomed to north and night and far beyond, where ruined straits and headlands loomed and sank. There seemed the awful, endings of the world then spake the leader let us go not yet but stay a little ere we turn us south perchance poor souls they might be somewhere here and then to me you go for you are young and strong and life throbs quickest in your veins and you have eyes more strong to see for ours are dimmed by the dread frost mist of this land. And creep out there beyond yon gleaming ledge, and bring me word of what you there may see. And if you meet no sign of mast or sail, or hull or wreck, or mark of living soul, 
then we will turn our faces to the south for this great ocean's vastness hems us in and death here nightly creeps from strand to strand and binds with girth of black the gleaming world then whispering madness madness to the dark i crept me fearful o'er that gleaming ledge and saw but night in awful gulfs of dark and weird ice mountains looming desolate there and far beyond the vastness of that sea and then o oh god why died i not that hour amid the gleaming flows far up that shore so far it seemed that man's foot scarce could go the certain tapering outline of a mast in one small patch of rag and then i felt no man could ever live to reach that place and horror seized me of that haunted world that i should die there and be froze for a amid the ice core of its awful heart then crept i back the weak ghost of a life a miserable shaking coffined fear and spake i saw but ice and winds and dark and the dread vastness of that desolate sea again he spake creep out once more and look perchance your sight was misled by the gleam and then once more i crept out on that ledge and saw again the night and awful dark and that poor beckoning mast that haunts me yet and as i lay those moments seemed to grow as men have felt in looking down long years and there i chose twixt evil and the good and took the evil then began my hell and back i crept with that black lie on lips and spake again i only saw the night and those weird mountains and the awful deep at that he moaned and spake poor souls poor souls then they are doomed if ever men were doomed whereat a sudden great auroral flame filled all the heaven lighting waste and sea and came a wondrous shock across the world like sounds of far-off battle where hosts die as if god thundered back mine awful lie and i fell in a heap where all was black when next i lived we were full three days south and two had died upon that dreadful march the memory came and i went laughing mad but kept mine awful secret to this hour no priest you can do nothing pain like mine must smolder out in its own agony till there be naught but ashes at the last but something mid the pauses of the dark doth teach me that i am not all alone for i have dreamed in my dread maddest hour an awful shadow blacker than my black went ever with me hearken to me now i never felt a hand or saw a face i never knew a comfort more than sleep the winters they are only barren snows and age is hard and death waits at the last but i have felt in some dim shapeless way as memories long remembered after youth that back of all there is some mighty will beyond the little dreams that we are here beyond the misery of our days and years beyond the outmost system's outmost rim where wrinkled suns in awful blackness swim a wondrous mercy that is working still end of poem this recording is in the public domain
her look by william wilfred campbell read for librivox dot org by kathleen time may set his fingers there fix the smiles that curve about her winsome mouth and touch her hair put the curves of youth to rout but the something god put there that which drew me to her first not the imps of pain and care not all sorrows fiends accursed can kill the look that god put there something beautiful and rare nothing common can destroy not all the leaden load of care not all the dross of earth's alloy better than all fame or gold true is only god's own truth it is something all hearts hold who have loved once in their youth that sweet look her face doth hold thus will ever be to me joy may all her pinions fold care may come and misery through the days of murk and shine though the roads be foul or fair i will see through love's glad inn that sweet look that god put there end of poem this recording is in the public domain the wayfarer by william wilfred campbell read for librivox dot org by kathleen he woke with the dawning met eyes with the sun and drank the wild rapture of living begun but he went with the moment to follow the clue ere the first red of dawning had drunk the blue dew follow him follow him where the world will under the sunlight by meadow and hill down the blue distance round the world's rim where the hosts of the future are horning for him follow him call to him pray to him sweet tell him the morning is fresh for his feet sing him the rapture the glamour the gleam of pearly dew azure that curtains the stream sing the glad thrush note that never knew pain but sing him and call him and pray him in vain for ere the red dew-drop in sunlight was pearled he heard that mad ocean that whelms the world yea heard that voice calling past sunlight and dew that rarest alluringest ever heart knew that siren of sunrise that weaver of songs till the heart of man hearkens and gladdens and longs till o'er the blue distance as opens the rose the yearning impulsion of all his life goes and many a dragon chimera so grim down the dream of the morning is vanquished by him yea sing to him call him through heartache in vain but the gladdest day wakened to glory must wane and the noonday he longed for to fierce light will burn and the battles he wages grow bitter and stern and the surge of life sink to the moan of a bar and the hopes of the morning grow hollow and far and the road that he follows less luring and true till he longs for a whiff of the morning he knew for he hears thy far singing that lures not in vain till he comes to thy beauty of dawning again but the roads of returning are never the same as the sweet dewy meadows of morning we came but the song of alluring is ever as true to lead the heart back to the beauty he knew and vain the mad magic where life's glories burn for the heart of the yearner who longs to return for he hears that voice calling voiced never in vain to world heart a weary for all dreamings fain and he hears the low grasses the green tents of sod from roof trees of slumber as voices of god and the spinning and turning of madness amain fade out from his dreaming as night from the pain when the rosy red splendor in dew dreams impearled from ashes of slumber lifts over the world yea back from those echoes of bugles that blew heart weary life broken he wanders to you yea back to his truest those far broken gleams of that rosy red morning lit house of his dreams where all hours were splendid and all hearts held true in those glory lit visions of beauty and you yea call to him cry to him mother of all you lit his youth's torches you saw their flames fall you loved him upheld him this child of thy breast and now give him surcease in dreamings and rest thy note was the one note he heard in the fray that bore him far out in the heat of the day thy call is the one call that beckons him home when day fires darken by forest and foam when o'er all the heartache the visions untrue love draws her dim curtains of dusk fire and dew while the bells ring for slumber as out of the deep 
completing those velvet winged spirits of sleep and there at thy doorways of slumber he stands like him of old horeb and sees his heart's lands and under the white awe of planets that swim knows dawning and even as one world to him end of poem this recording is in the public domain to the ottawa by william wilfred campbell read for librivox dot org by lady k july twentieth two thousand seventeen lethbridge alberta canada out of the northern wastes lands of winter and death regions of ruin and age spaces of solitude lost you wash and thunder and sweep and dream and sparkle and creep turbulent luminous large scion of thunder and frost down past woodland and waste lone as the haunting of even of shriveled and wind moaning night when winter hath wizened the world down past hamlet and town by marshes by forests that frown brimming their desolate banks your tides to the ocean are hurled end of poem this recording is in the public domain departure by william wilfred campbell read for LibriVox.org by nemo departure old house now ruined wrecked and gray home once enshrined of love's delight and all glad promise of the may now hushed in shades of wintry night once garment of a thousand loves now but a shroud of glooming stone while sad october moans and roves old house old house we are alone we are alone yea you and i who dreamed old summers in their prime now sad and late to see them die along this ruined verge of time old rooms now empty once so bright staircases climbed of gladdening feet dark windows erstwhile filled with light where now but rains of autumn beat where now but lorn months call and call and sea and gust and night complain with ghost boughs shadowing on the wall or dead vines knocking at the pane old place whose ceilings walls and floors still redolent of love and may once more once more i leave your doors into the night i take my way huge yawning hearths once flaming bright on many a well-loved face and form long gathered out into the night to meet the vastness and the storm into the night where i too go beyond your sheltering walls and doors where death's october drives his woe over a thousand midnight moors beyond your sheltering where i beat to sleep with stars of dark or gleamed or breast the night of moan and sleet to meet that morn a world hath dreamed hath dreamed hope hungering heart hath read and carolled morning lifted lark yea back of all this muffled dread perchance some splendor rifts the dark yea though no magic reach its gleams nor heart of doubting prove it true old house beloved of my dead dreams while i go forth from love and you and a poem this recording is in the public domain Phaethon by William Wilford Campbell, read for LibriVox.org by Chris Bars. Phaethon, I, Phaethon, dwelling in that golden house, 
which Hephaestos did build for my great sire, old Helios, king of glowing heaven and day, knowing his life but mortal in its span, hedged in by pulling youth and palsied age, where poor men crawl like insects, knowing pain, and mighty sorrows to the gates of death, besought the god my father by his love to grant me that which i did long for most of all things great in earth and heaven and sea the which he granting in his mighty love of all things splendid under the splendid sky built of old by toil of ancient gods to me the dearest for one round golden day to stand in his great chariot built of fire, and chase the rosy hours from dawn to dusk, guiding his fleeting steeds o'er heaven's floors, he gave to me. No god yet break his word, speaking to me in sorrow. O oh, my son, know what thy foolish pride hath made for thee, that mortal life, which is to men a span from childhood unto youth and manhood's prime reaching on out to happy olden age for thee must shrink into one woeful day for o oh my son impetuous in thy pride who would be as the gods and ape their ways and sacrilegious leave thy mortal bounds know thou must die upon that baleful day that terrible day of days thou mountest up to ride that chariot never mortal rode and drive those steeds that never man hath driven then i my father know me thine own son better to me to live one day a god going out in some great flame of death than live in this weary life of common men misunderstood misunderstanding still half wakeful moving dimly in a dream confuse phantasmic men call history chasing the circles of the perishing suns the summers and dim winters hating all heart eaten for longing ne'er attained despising all things named of earth or heaven or mortal birth that they should ever be knowing within this mystery of my being this curbed heredity lies a latent dream of some old vanished banished lease of being when life was life and man's soul lived its hour uncurbed uncabined like the mighty gods vast splendid capable and herculean to drain the golden beaker of his days thus i my father i am over weary chained in this summer plot of circumstance beaten by fearful custom childish chidden hounded of cruel wolves of superstition and rounded by a petty wall of time plodding the dreary years that wend their round aping the sleeping sensual life of beasts fearful of all things dreaded mostly death past pain and age and all their miseried end where all must rot who smile and weep and sleep and be a part of all this grim corruption nay better to me than the long measure draught trickling out through many anxious years iron eaten haggard to the place of death to drain my flagon of life in one glad draught to live to love aspire and dare all things be all i am and others ought to be real man or demigod 
to blossom my rose, to scale my heights, to live my vastest dream, to climb, to be, and then, if chance my fate, to greatly fall. Then, my great father, laden with woe divine, my son, take thou thy way, as thou hast chosen, thus twill be to thee, and passing, darkened down his godlike face, and shadowed splendor thence for evermore. Twas night ambrosial down the orient meads, with stars like winking pearls, far studding heaven, and dews all glorious on the bending stem, odorous, passionate as the rose of sleep, half budded on the throbbing heart of night, and in the east a glowing sapphire gloomed. When I awoke and lifted up mine eyes, and saw through rose and gold and vermeil dyes, and splendid mists of azure hung with pearl, half hid, half seen, as life would apprehend, as in a sleep the presence of dim death, and fate, and terrible gods, the car of day. Like morn within the morning, glad it hung, light hid in light, swift blinding all who saw, dazzled its presence, motionless, though vibrate, where it did swing athwart the deep welled night, the heart of morning in the folds of dark, pulsating sleep and conquering death with life, so glowed its glory, folded cloud in cloud, gold within azure, purple shunt in gold, the bud of morning pulsing ere it break, and spill its splendors, many vermil died, reddening ocean to his outmost rim. Here charmed dreams, and drowsed magic hung, and winged hopes and rosy joys afloat, filled all the air, and I was quick aware that this was life, and this mine hour supreme, to seize and act and be one with the gods. So dreamed I, reckless when to think, to act, and moved, elate, with swift life-flaming steep, athwart the meadow's budding asphodels, song on my lip, and life at heart and eye, exultant, breathing flame of pride and power. Joy rose and sang, a bird across the fields, hope's rosy wing shot trembling to the blue, and courage with dauntless steps before me went, brushed with veils of fierce cobwebby fires, and there before me sprawled grim ancient power, a hideous Ethiop, huge in sodden sleep, the golden reins clutched in his titan hands, I snatched, leaped, shouted, morning rose in flame, and ashweed paled to lily, lily blushed, to ruddy crocus, crocus flame to rose, and out of all, born on the floors of light, I floated, gloried, up the orient walls, and all things woke and sang of conquering day. Higher yet, higher, out of fiery mists, filling those meadows of the dew-built dawn, gloried and glorying, power clutched in my hand, wreathed about in terrible splendors, I drave, glowing the dawn's gold coursers, champing steam of snow and pearly foam from golden bridles, forged in blue Idolian forges of the night, beaten on steely anvils of the stars. These champing reared their fetlocks, breathing flame, in red dew-draining lances thundered on, whelming night as golden stair by stair they climbed the glimmering bridgeway of the day. Far under wreathed in mists, old oceans swayed, and cyclops-like the bearded mountains hung, vast shining rivers with their brimming floors, 
and broad curved courses gleamed and glanced and shone and loneliness and gloom and gray despair with sombre hauntings fled to shuddering night hidden in caves and coral glooms of seas low down the east the morn's ambrosial meads sank in soft splendors sphering out below gilded in morning anchored the patient earth mountain and valley ocean and wide plain opening to dawn's young footsteps where we wheeled and blossomed wide the rosebud of the day glory was mine but greater sense of power nor marred by fear as loftier we climbed with glinting hooves that clanged the azure bridge that arched from dawning up to flaming noon dauntless my soul and fiery glad my heart and vastness vastness sang through all my being as gloved with adamant i guided on the day's red courses up their flaming hill to reach the mighty keystone of the day all things conspired to build my upward road the fitful winds of morning the soft clouds that fleece like swept my cheek the azure glint of ocean swaying restless on his rim where slept the continents like a serpent curled in sleep leviathan huge about the world then sudden all my waking turned to dream a madness wherein hideous all things hung thought fled confused and awful apprehension shadowed my spirit power and reason fled and maddening day's red courses thundered on uncurbed unguided by my palsied hand then with loud ruin blundering from the bridge through space went swaying now high up now down scattering conflagration and fierce death o'er earth shrunk verges from their scorching scarred time fled in terror forest shriveled up ocean drew back in shudderings to his caves huge mountains shook and rumbled to their base great streams dried up old cities smoked and fell and all life met confusion and despair and dread annihilation then the gods pitying wrecked nature in their sudden vengeance me impious hurled from out my dizzying height time vanished reason swooned then left her throne and darkness wrapped me as i shuddering fell oblivion clouded to the plunging seas ocean received me folding in her deeps cooling and emerald here in coral dreams i rest and cure me never wholly waking filled with one splendor fumbling in a dream as waves do fumble all about a cave for one clear memory of that one high day i failed was mortal where i climbed i fell but all else little matters life was mine i dreamed i dared i grappled with i fell and here i live it over in my dreams all things may pass decline and come to naught death whelm life as day engulfed in dark but i have greatly lived have greatly dared and death will never wholly wrap me round and black me in its terrors i am made one with the future dwelling in the dreams and memories dread of envious gods and men end of poem this recording is in the public domain the humming bee by William Wilfred Campbell, read for LibriVox.org by Emma Charlotte. Glad music of the summer's heart, 
jargoning from flower to flower, a part of each unconscious hour, until the happy days depart. Thou dreamlike toiler of the fields, each honeyed spot thou knowest well, where nature's heart her sweetness yields, some ruined trunk thy citadel. There buildest a home for winter's hour, in some lone, sunlight-haunted place, when all the year is at its power, and June's high tide on bank and bower mirrors in blossoms nature's face. At early morn by breathing wood, or in some dewy clover dell, tuning the young day's solitude, or down the slumbrous afternoon, rich freighted, wingest thy tuneful way, self-musing, murmurous, musical. Amid the whole world's dreamy swoon, sole voice of all the drowsed day, until the gradual shadows fall. Then by some lonely pasture fell, at ruddy eve when homeward come, past deepening shade or fading ray, the weary children of the day. I hear thy joyous, drowsy hum, till stars peep out and woods breathe low, and sounds of human toil grow dumb, and night the blessed comes apace, bending to earth's her cooling face while airs across the dark outblow, then rocked on some glad blossom's breast, thou dreamest to rest. When summer wanes to autumn's age, and come the days of fate and rage, O oh, happy humming bee, then wilt thou sink to wintry sleep, when storms are hoarse along the deep, in hushed tranquillity, no more wilt wind thy subtle horn, by dreamy eve or misty morn, when trees are leafless, pastures shorn. Ah me, ah me, could we, like thee, go down the days of summer hush to autumn haze, housing with what we built before, the gold of all our memories store and garnered thought. So when the bleak December's hate beat round the bastions of our fate, we wrapped in wealth of honeyed dreams, of kindlier visions far off streams, might heed it not. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Children of the Foam by William Wilfred Campbell Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo The Children of the Foam Out forever and forever, where our tresses glint and shiver, on the icy moonlit air, come we from a land of gloaming, children lost, forever homing, never, never reaching there. Ride we, ride we ever faster, Driven by our demon master, the wild wind in his despair. Ride we, ride we ever home, wan white children of the foam. In the wild October dawning, when the heaven's angry awning leans to lakeward bleak and drear, and along the black wet ledges, under icy caverned edges, breaks the lake in maddened fear. And the woods and shore are moaning, then you hear our weird intoning, mad late children of the year. Ride we, ride we ever home, lost white children of the foam. All gray day, the black sky under, where the beaches moan and thunder, where the breakers spume and comb. You may hear our riding, riding, you may hear our voices chiding, under glimmer, under gloam. Like a far-off infant wailing, you may hear our hailing, hailing, for the voices of our home. 
Ride we, ride we ever home, Haunted children of the foam. And at midnight, when the glimmer Of the moon grows dank and dimmer, Then we lift our gleaming eyes, Then you see our white arms tossing, Our wan breasts the moon embossing, Under gloom of lake and skies. You may hear our mournful chanting, And our voices haunting, haunting, Through the night's mad melodies, Riding, riding ever home, Wild white children of the foam. There, forever and forever, Will no demon hate dissever, Peace and sleep and rest and dream. There is neither fear nor fret there, When the tired children get there, Only dews and pallid beam, Fallen gentle peace and sadness, Over long surcease of madness, From hushed skies that gleam and gleam. And the longed for, sought for home, of the children of the foam. There the streets are hushed and restful, and of dreams is every breastful, with a sleep that tired eyes wear. There the city hath long quiet, from the madness and the riot, from the failing hearts of care. Balm of peacefulness and gliding, dream we through our riding, riding, as we homeward. Homeward fair, riding, riding ever home, wild white children of the foam. Under pallid moonlight beaming, under stars of midnight gleaming, and the ebon arch of night, round the rosy edge of morning, you may hear our distant horning, you may mark our phantom flight. Riding, riding ever faster, driven by our demon master, under darkness, under light, ride we, ride we ever home, wild, white children of the foam. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. How One Winter Came by William Wilfred Campbell Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo How One Winter Came in the lake region for weeks and weeks the autumn world stood still clothed and in the shadow of a smoky haze the fields were dead the wind had lost its will and all the lands were hushed by wood and hill in those gray withered days behind a mist the blear sun rose and set at night the moon would nestle in a cloud the fisherman, a ghost, did cast his net. The lake at shores forgot to chafe and fret, and hushed its caverns loud. Far in the smoky woods the birds were mute, save that from blackened tree a jay would scream. Or far in swamps the lizard's lonesome lute would pipe in thirst, or by some gnarled root the tree toad trilled his dream. From day to day still hushed the season's mood. The streams stayed in their runnels shrunk and dry. Suns rose aghast by wave and shore and wood, and all the world with ominous silence stood in weird expectancy. When one strange night the sun, like blood, went down, flooding the heavens in a ruddy hue, red grew the lake, the sere fields parched and brown, Red grew the marshes where the creek stole down, But never a wind-breath blew. That night I felt the winter in my veins, A joyous tremor of the icy glow, And woke to hear the north's wild, vibrant strains, While far and wide, by withered woods and plains, Fast fell the driving snow. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of Beyond the Hills of Dream by William Wilfred Campbell